Good evening and welcome to the Ombudsman program. My name is Diane Wellborn. I am the Ombudsman and I'm going to be the host for this evening's program. Um, I have with me tonight the Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity in Dayton, Diane Graham. Welcome to the program, Thank Diane. You. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Diane has been the Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity for the past five years. Uh, there's been a lot of development happening with that program uh, most recently, so we wanted to have her on tonight um, to bring us up to date on all the wonderful uh, programming that they are doing and the people that they are involving in that program. Um, so I'd like to start by asking you to tell us a little bit about the mission and history of Habitat, then we'll work our way up okay. to all of, your, all of your current happenings. Okay. So, all right. Well, we um, were started uh, in Dayton in 1983, and um, Habitat International started in 1976. So we were one of the earlier, I would say, affiliates. We were the oldest one in Ohio. So many of our founders actually got to go down to Koinonia Farm in Georgia, you know, where the whole deal was happening down there. But um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but Habitat was not started by Jimmy Carter. Uh, it was started by Millard and Linda Fuller. Okay. They were a very successful couple. He was a lawyer and um, he went, um, they did mission work and uh, went to Africa and built housing there. I just came up with the idea that, you know, let's go home and eliminate it first in our county in Georgia, then in the state of Georgia, and then, you know, it became, once again, a global program. But, nice. you know, he, um, he came up with the concept, though, of using volunteerism and sweat equity and all the things that we're now known for, you know, to eliminate um, poverty housing you know, to make housing affordable for everyone in, in our country and really around the world. Mm -hmm. It's really quite, uh, quite innovative um, for, that, uh, mm -hmm. for that program. Um, I was probably going to address this later, but I'll jump into it now since you mentioned it. You mentioned sweat equity. Yes. Why don't you tell our viewers who may not be familiar with what that is, what exactly is sweat equity? Okay. So first of all, who we serve are low-income folks in Montgomery County. So um, that means they uh, are between the 30 and 60% of the adjusted median income for their family size. So first, you know, it's an income requirement. Then when, um, after there's some more um, objective kind of things that we do in our, in our process mm -hmm. to uh, solicit partner families, um, they have to commit to do for a single parent family, 275 hours of sweat equity, or for a married couple, 550. So that is their, um, that's their skin in the game. Okay. And that's one of the concepts that Millard came up with early on. And we, how we do it here is that we really try to have them do pretty much half their hours on somebody else's house or in the restore and then finish their hours on their own. So then they know more about how their house works than, you know, than most people would. <laughs> right, than those of us that just go purchase one and do, right. not, do not build it. Right. And that's very interesting that from the very beginning, that high level of sweat equity and involvement on behalf of the future homeowner uh, was a part of the original program. Right, and it's, it's cool. practiced um, globally. Yes. They yeah. do it everywhere. All right. That's, that's great then. Well, um, tell us uh, then about the establishment of, of Habitat uh, in Dayton. Well, and I think that there were, like I said, there were some of the folks that, you know, Koinonia Farm, it was originally kind of like a commune, mm -hmm. you know, but then, uh, so some of the folks from Dayton, um, some of them are still uh, going to College Hill, church and okay. you know they were some of our founders but they said we we need to do this here also we have folks in Montgomery County who we can help and you know so they I think you know it's it's just like anything else that gets started grassroots except um, you know Habitat just kind of stayed with its same structure and we just kept getting bigger and bigger and 
mm -hmm. so on. But um, I would say if we incorporated it in 83, we had our first house built by 85, and All it right. was actually a rehab, but... <laughs> okay. All right. The first so one it, was yes, that. Yes. So then uh, there definitely then College Hill Church was, Absolutely. was a site of the... the um, the initi yes. initiators of Reverend this program Jones here. was around okay. and right. and uh, John is. Ewers, yeah. you yeah. know. Yes. So uh -huh. they um, and at at John's funeral, in fact, I um, had to tell Paula mm -hmm. that I still think about what would John say, yes. what would John tell us to do, you right. know, because he's been a, you know a mentor for us for right. so long and been involved in the program from its very inception. Right, oh, that, that's great. So you say the first home was built in '84. Well, it really was a rehab. It was so, a rehab. Yes. Okay. And it was in um, Lower Dayton View. But okay. I mean, you know, that things are kind of different now. But in those days, you sure. know, we didn't have, you know, we didn't really have like corporate sponsors or things right. like that, right. you know, right. so or grants. So we uh, were given, we were given a, re a house to rehab. All right. And it is still in our inventory of family. So it you know, is. Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. So does a house stay in the inventory pretty uh, for a very long Believe time? Believe it or not, it, they really do. Okay. I mean, most people don't sell their habitat house. Right, right. Because it's built so well, uh -huh. you know, and uh -huh. it's a lifelong dream. And, you right. know, so, but sometimes due to family circumstances, you know, they move out of state and, right. You know that the house goes to the family, or they just give it back to us, and we recycle it to another okay, habitat family. Okay, into an, into another one. Yes. Well, then, how many houses have been built? Since well, that we are at one ninety-six. Okay. So That's, um, we're about to hit two hundred. Yes. That'll be a glorious yes. uh, project. Yes. And this is our thirtieth year, so yes. we were hoping that mm -hmm. we could, you know, get it done. You know. Uh -huh. So I think by the time we actually finish the year of our Yes. 30th anniversary, uh -huh. we will hit 200. Okay, well that's exciting. It is. That's really that's that's a lot of houses. Now, are they um, are they all over Montgomery County? They are. are okay, so they are. We have spread built out everywhere. Yes. Okay. We, um, you know, in the beginning, mm -hmm. I think we built largely in Dayton, mm -hmm. but um, every every municipality in Montgomery County has welcomed us. That's good. And it's a matter actually of making the financials work. Uh -huh. I mean, even the suburbs, you know, right. that. Um, you wouldn't think we would build a habitat house there. We actually could. There's no restriction about it. It's just that the property value might make the taxes so high that it would be more than the principal. Right, right, <laughs> so, exactly. So then that's not affordable. Right, right. It, it, it changes the whole it formula does. that you, it, all, that you all then work on. Um, well, you, you kind of already uh, addressed this, but um, the pr basic purpose then of habitat and its mission from when it started in Georgia and here in Dayton has really not veered very much. Well, uh, I have to say that it has a little. Okay. And it, in maybe about five years ago, uh -huh. we, I felt that, um, and I've been a volunteer for 21 years before I was an employee. Right. And um, I just felt that, um, and, and I really talked the board into, you know, believing mm -hmm. the same thing too. And since that time, then International has come to our way of thinking that it is really not about the house. It's about the people that live in the house. Mm -hmm. So if every decision is made around them, mm -hmm. then it's the right one. So we have done that paradigm shift so that we, our mission stays the same, mm -hmm. but we're actually building the human being that lives in the house, not the house. Okay. And really, it was a lot of production questions, you know, before that, mm -hmm. like how many new, how many rehab, mm -hmm. instead of who are you serving? And so we, we are one of um, probably, I would say not all habitats do a training program like we do. We do six months of training to make sure that the family has the skills for home ownership. You just don't hand them keys. Mm -hmm. And I really should say, because we haven't discussed it yet, that I'm selling them that house. We're not giving it to them. Right. They purchase the house at a 0% interest mortgage. So um, that you know, surprises somebody every day because when, when they see us on TV, all they see is the key exchange. It is not free. We have already had a closing and now they own that house, but they have to pay us back. 
Right, exactly, yeah. Well, it's good to get that out because you're right, and you want people to be seeing the keys uh, yes. when they're moving in. I mean, that's the happy culminating moment, it is. you know, with the program. But but uh, that's very good uh, to get to get that that point out. Um, before I dive into asking you some of the mechanics about how does that actually work. Um, uh, let's let's talk a, a little bit about the need in in our community. I mean, clearly Habitat has been here since the early '80s mm -hmm. and has been building homes. But um, what do you see about the need for affordable housing in our community currently? I would say that, of course, the need is high. However, you, you, the people that we serve are probably what would be called the working poor they are working there is income to the house that they pay our mortgage payment with mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so um, there are those that don't have a job maybe that we don't serve you know there are others in our community who do serve them but you know we um, we there are lots of people that don't have the opportunity of home ownership that actually go to work every day right of course and so what we're trying to do is develop that family to help those children and fix that street and that community. Mm -hmm. So that that is our goal. So, I mean, we're kind of, um, I'm not sure all programs are home ownership programs. You know, the, everybody serves in their way. Right. But we do by, you know, building up the equity in the, in the family, you know, and then they become, you know, like anybody else that could um, take a home improvement loan on the equity in their house, you know, mm -hmm. because they have it. Mm -hmm. And you know we have we have mortgage burning parties too, and many of our families it actually you know pay their mortgages off before the stated time. I mean it's good. it's it's amazing. And when pe I could I could tell you story after story. I have a family of um, that were two sisters that were in wheelchairs that did their full fifty five hundred and fifty hours of sweat equity from a wheelchair, and we built that house handicapped accessible to accommodate both of them and they paid off in 15 years. So they totally own their house. Well, it's a wonderful story. It they is. They wouldn't wonderful. be able to in any other mm -hmm. in any other kind of um, kind of setting. Are you uh, are you deluged with applicants? We, are you finding that that many 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 people in the community are are hoping to be accepted? Yes, and, and we kind of, um, we take applications twice a year. And so our Family Services Department fields the calls in, all year long and have them come to these two application rounds. But I think once they find out that, I mean, because what they see is on TV and it's the key handing. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that this family, you know, somebody's going to work every day, they had to put 550 hours of sweat equity in, and so on. So when they find out that we're looking at your credit history, you know, you need to have the ability to repay us because we're looking for um, debt to income ratio that's possible for repayment enough income for repayment, you know, that uh, sometimes that, you know, the, the, how we serve in that, in that application part is that even if we can't take you now, we can tell you how to fix it. You know, maybe you need to get a second job for a year, pay off some of this debt, go to Consumer Credit Counseling, who is a great collaborating partner of ours, and then come back in a year. And we've had many people that did that because they can't possibly be successful in the whole mortgage paying, paying part the way they were. But now they, you know, and those people, uh, they're, just, they're just wonderful. They're so thankful that they, somebody helped them. This is how you do it. This is how you do it this month, six months, and a year. Right, to get yes. out from under that debt so yes. that their, their credit ratio is such that they're able then right. to, to pay that back. And then it's surprising that even in our classes that, you know, some people have not been exposed to, um, believe me, almost every other class is about money. <laughs> it is. You know, we have a home maintenance class and then a budget class. And then we have a um, legal class and then a budget class. But there are many people that are adults and have been adults but had never been shown any sort of a budget system. You know, this is how you put so much money back for this. And there are wants and needs 
and the wants should be put over here and the needs should be put first, you know. Right, right. Some people have never been exposed to that information. Right. But we have a lot of banking partners and um, credit partners actually too that help teach these classes. Well, that's wonderful. It is. Well, habit, the language of Habitat does talk a lot about partners and mm -hmm. you just did and, and used that. So um, why don't you talk a little bit about what that means in the world of Habitat? Okay. What, what are these partnerships? And, uh, okay. Well, one is the family and you know I think that we um, we couldn't do it without them. Oh yes. Because remember even after after they go through all their training and all their sweat equity and then they become homeowners, they're paying us back. So that circulating mortgage money is actually building houses for others because you have to have the money up front to build the house, right? Mm -hmm. And then be repaid back over 20 years. So mm -hmm. number one, a partner is the current homeowners mm -hmm. who we have about 145 of them that are currently making mortgage payments. And you know, it, the bigger we get, the older we are, you know, it's an increasing number and it's, it's, um, it's kind of satisfying to actually take that check down to the treasurer's office on behalf of Habitat families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a significant amount of money we mm -hmm. pay in real estate tax. Right, right. So, you know, but so the, the families are one of our collaborators. Right. Um, all the government municipalities, you know, they, they really do help us, all of them, you know, in this, um, kind of recession that we've just gone through. Yes. We have just continued to plug along at our rate, you know, and we're not building mansions, but we've we've been building. And so, you know, they with um, our improved processes and, you know, they have are cooperating and helping us get fine land that we can develop on and so a lot of it is the municipalities. And then, you know, we have funding sponsors that are just, we couldn't do it without them because as I said, we have to have the money up front. So we have certain um, corporate groups that support a house every year. So they come back and they've done it for as long as I can remember. We have a lot of um, religious groups that even combine, uh, for instance, the Catholics and the Presbyterians together is Catch the Building Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so they are in their 25th year of, and they don't even need any of our site supervisors. They're so good, they can do it themselves. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now that's the kind of sponsor you really want, yeah. right? That yeah. pays and builds. Right. But, um, and then, you know, the individual donor too. Yeah, uh, we couldn't do it without, without them. Mm -hmm. You know, that just see, um, our story and they're touched by it and they want to support it and a lot of it Diane is the fact that and I think you touched on it is it, we're just helping somebody help themselves mm -hmm. you know there are some programs that you know that it's all services going one way but you know really they just need a hand up you know mm -hmm. not a handout right <laughs> right exactly mm -hmm. and then um, I, I also am sure that the building trades are a big partner for you as well well they they can be yes, yes. Okay. I mean we we remember do a lot of our own work yes except everything that is inspectable we contract all right you know we uh, we used to try to do it all ourselves like electrical plumbing and all that but the bottom line is that it would take longer to fix, you know, what a non-professional might have done. <laughs> I see. I, see. I understand. So now yeah. we contract those pieces. It's just more efficient it to is. contract it, it than to, to build it and have to have to uh, replace it. Well, Diane, I've been told that we have a caller that has a question okay. for us. Okay. So we're going to stop now and, and hear that telephone call. You're on the air, please. Uh, this is such a great program, uh, such a thoughtful and articulate and congenial uh, guest. And uh, I've always admired the Habitat for Humanity work. Uh, my good friends, Robert Jones at College Hill and uh, an old friend, Jim Gudgel uh, of uh, Blessed Memory, who was at David's Road um, in Kettering, uh, were very much involved in Habitat for Humanity from the beginning. Um, so impressive that you've built so many homes, 196. That's just amazing. Uh, but I'm most impressed with the latest uh, development, uh, the insight that people, uh, the people that live in the houses, 
uh, are the starting point for consideration. Uh, and that's the point of my question. Um, I understand that Habitat works uh, mainly to get houses for the working poor, but uh, in, our, uh, in our economy now, so many people don't have jobs, and they're not working. Um, and so I'm wondering, uh, has the philosophy, uh, the thought process, the uh, reflection of people involved with Habitat uh, come to the point of thinking about uh, what can be done uh, for those who don't have jobs and who are not able to pay a mortgage? Uh, thank you for listening to my question. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll get your answer off the air. I think maybe we'll swing back then to that whole, the whole mortgage and that ratio and income coming in process to hopefully uh, address that for many of our citizens in our community that are really low earners mm -hmm. that are, are mm -hmm. not able to get much money together at all. So what? Well, the only, um, the only program that we are currently able to offer someone like that is that we are now um, entering into repair, and it's owner-occupied repair. So in other words, if there's um, a lady living in a house and she doesn't have much income, but she wants to stay there, then you know we will help her fix her house up. And um, we will likely seek the funding for it outside of her means, you know, mm -hmm. just to help her get that done. Okay. Um, but right now we are not set up to help, let's say, a younger family, you know, that has no income. But I think that there are other partners that might be able to help along those lines. Um, one of which I'm thinking could be, um, you know, the uh, Greater Dayton Property Management, the old DMHA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they um, they have got a lot of their housing now dispersed sites. You know, versus the projects like they used to be. So that I would think would be a start. And then um, St. Mary's and um, County Corp. You know, they both have programs I believe that are kind of like rent to own things um, that you could start off like making a rent payment to them and then at the end of 15 years or something like that you could purchase the house. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not really set up to change everything about our structure to for home ownership other than the repair and we are doing that already mostly for elderly. Yeah. And then um, it, it, when you uh, when you talk about the the mortgages that that people pay, what is the average cost of the houses that are built by Habitat? And then what are like the terms for most? I mean, I, I know it's different for well, every single person because their and family size and, and their affordability is different. And I recognize that there's formulas underneath all of that, but maybe if you could say a little bit sure. more about what what do people's mortgage payments turn out to be? Well, uh, for one thing, we know a lot about their income yes. <laughs> at that point, right? Yes. So we make sure that their total expenses for um, owning that house, um, which includes utilities, taxes, insurance, and the principal, are no more than 30% of their take-home pay. So their mortgage amount is really not based on my cost, but on the appraisal too. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I, if it costs me, let's, I'm going to use round numbers. Sure. If it costs me a, a, a hundred thousand to build it, but it appraised for 90000 in that area, then their mortgage would be based on the 90, not the 100. And then the terms would, would be, be based on 30% of their take home. Of pay. their take home. So the length then yeah. would make up the difference. And then if their income should change while they're in a mortgage situation with you, are you all able to? Absolutely. Because we are the bank. Yes. Yeah, so you can change. Yes. If the 30% then is a lower figure right. from one year to, and a higher figure to the next. And it happens. Yes, Life I'm happens. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. But, I mean, it also happens that sometimes they get better jobs. Yes, true. Because we, we really do, and I should have mentioned some of our collaborating partners mm -hmm. are um, 
our employers too, yes. you know, like the hospital systems and, you know, they'll do their very best to hire people that we might recommend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times you can move your way up in their system, you know, and they offer tuition reimbursement and things like that. So, you know, it is possible to improve your financial yes. and pay off early. <laughs> yes. Well, that, that's a very And 0% is a great number. <laughs> a very 0% is the best of all. Absolutely. And, um, uh, uh, you've, you've t we've talked about building, but I also want to talk about the donation of homes because we in the Dayton area have so many homes mm -hmm. that are abandoned, not occupied. There's a lot of property, but a lot of those, of course, would be maybe too expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But what, as you are looking at housing stock and places to go and do, what is your assessment of? how can habitat fit with our need to save property from just being demolished everywhere? Well, it's tough because yeah. even we have to say no sometimes. But, um, you know, and people are offering us, I would say we turn down more than we take. And because, what are some of the reasons okay, why you Okay, one have, of them yeah. is going to really surprise you because I was offered a, a lovely, lovely house in Dayton View. And, um, uh, and so, you know, I'm not the expert in this area. So my field operations director, you know, tells me it has 26 windows. Our house budget, you know, we're going to put an insulated uh, energy efficient window in there. Our house budget is like nine, nine to 10 windows. This house had 26 windows. I see. So right there, you know, huge either, you know, loss of of um, you know heating cooling and just the window budget alone there you know would have just knocked us out of the park and we try very very hard to um, make sure that the utilities are not going to be astronomical for any of our families well right because you're trying to keep everything at 30 percent even with the utility yes. programs yes. that are offered I see you energy yes. efficiency is, yes. a, is an important which goal is a lot of you. reason why we build mm -hmm. new because I can guarantee that I'm going to build an energy star house that I build where if it's a rehab house I'm going to try my best but you know it's not going to be as energy efficient as if I built it mm -hmm. But um, so one of the reasons like could be windows. One is um, it's appraisal value, you know, like if it's the first thing we look, I mean, I would love to fix every street and every neighborhood, but if the house I'm offered is in a block full of uh, abandoned houses, my, my family who wants to, you know, move up in the world doesn't really want to live there. And we don't make them pick it, you know, they select it. You know, we have a certain inventory at the time they're permitted to choose. And if, you know, I'm not gonna make them choose one. They're never gonna pick that one. Everything else on the street is boarded up, you know. So there are times that I like to take like a six house development and do two a year. And then I can make a huge difference on that street, but you know, sometimes we take them and sometimes we don't. Okay. Well, what about, uh, do you get lots of offers of land? Uh, because we do have land. We do, okay. surprisingly. And uh, last year, um, a very kind gentleman donated four lots to me in East Dayton. And this year we're working on getting, I think, about an eight to ten lot development you know what we did learn about that is that we don't want to build them all at once though we like doing two a year because then we have some senior homeowners who could mentor the newer ones you know when everybody's new then nobody knows when to cut their grass you know what I mean I do and and you really should do what your neighbors do you know rake the leaves cut the grass right, you know <laughs> right right fitting in with yes. all, all the neighborhood exactly but yes we'd love to get land too okay. and, and we have had wonderful everybody who calls us really is is you know in a good philanthropic frame of mind it's just I can't always make it work right. the number part right. of it because if I have to put a hundred thousand in it I mean I don't mind, mind taking a little bit of subsidy you know, for the family that I'm going to, it's going to appraise. You know, if everything else in the neighborhood is appraising at 12 to 16, 
I can't put eighty thousand dollars in that house right. because my appraisal is going to come in not eighty. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now all those facts. Let's go back uh, and talk a little bit more about the families. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit more about some of the backgrounds of the of the families that you've worked with. You've mentioned already um, two ch sisters who both happen yes. to be using wheelchairs. Yes. And so talk a little bit about about the the backgrounds of the families that that are applicants. There are so many neat stories. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one that I'm thinking of is. Um, truly a success story that uh, she tells us now and and her house was built kind of in a larger development which like 20 houses we don't usually do that now uh. <laughs> six is like our max maybe 10 but um she was at the time she was um she was going to get that buy a house in that neighborhood but she said she her child i think was um maybe about seven years old and she just didn't like the, the way he was starting to act and behave so um, she decided to make some changes but the first thing was home ownership then she went to beauty school then you know she um, ended up uh, you know how kind of the beauticians are contractors you know and then she eventually owns the salon that um, she used to work at so it is a uh, the child is not is not of a majority age now. Right, right, grown. But, you yeah. know, I take full credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, that's I great. mean, that's just one story. We have, you know, amazing immigrant uh, families who, um, my goodness, the hardship that they went through before they even got here. Yes. And just very hard working. And I don't think that many Americans realize that, they were trained for occupations in the home country that are no longer valid and so they come here and they have to start all over but they have and so like one of our partner families uh, just graduated from Wright State with a BSN mm -hmm. that's not what he did in Rwanda right. you know what I mean and so we get the he speaks seven languages and you know the story it, it, you just really there are stories about um, uh, disability you know like we have heard like one of our homeowners that um, had an adult child with cerebral palsy and uh, when and she has two or three other children who are you know not disabled and so in the course of raising these kids um, they would have to move you know and and sometimes the child um, who's now 23 wasn't able to move where the rest of the family went and um, they um, had to put that child in foster care until they because the place where she got for them to live was on a second floor or something and so when we had the dedication for that family I mean there wasn't a dry eye because she talked about I will never ever mm -hmm. have to move her again right you know and said so we could just go on and on That's about lovely. It. and yeah. we we give those people the opportunity mm -hmm. you know for home ownership right right you mentioned uh, um, you've mentioned already certain qualifications um, that there has to be some right. kind of income yes uh, obviously coming uh, coming into the home you've talked a little bit about the the income guidelines and a little bit about about the the financing um, are are families who are uh, supported by uh, our supplement SSI mm -hmm. programs or SSD yes. programs, they are also yes. eligible. Yes. Okay, so that, that counts as yes. income for the habitat. And uh, we purposes. actually uh, count food stamp income okay. too. You count that Not as all well. habitats do, but we right. do because it's. You know, you won't be spending that out right. of your take-home. Exactly, payment, you so. would have to be uh, providing that mm -hmm. that food somewhere. And you've also uh, talked about the hours that the family uh, needs to contribute based on whether it's a, a, a single head of household or whether there are two people there that uh, are are going to do that. Um, is there? Uh, I'm sure there's an interview process that you go through after you do a paperwork application mm -hmm. and a, a credit check, and then you kind of mention twice a year. So talk a little bit about how um, how people overcome the various the various hurdles and what your training and your classes are um, for them. 
Well, you know, first of all, to even get selected, you know, there, there's a, a big interview where we use the Family Selection Committee, and those people are the most dedicated 20 people, but they know what they're doing, you know. They're are looking... They some of your Habitat homeowners? No, they're but not, they're all okay. volunteers. They're all on volunteers, the, mm -hmm. okay. And they, you know, they're, the uh, applicants are asked to bring, you know, proof of income, your utility bills, those types of things. So then that's kind of a mass setting, you know. Then we go, we move on to a, an interview with just you. And then they, um, that occurs with, you know, one of the interviewers and in our office and the family. And then they're asking maybe for a little bit more information. And then it finally is a home interview at their house. And I'll, you know, I'll tell you, it's improved a lot from the 80s. Because when they would do the home interviews then, they would walk into places where the need for housing was so great because there was black mold all over the, I mean, and the children would have allergy symptoms, you know what I mean? Yes. Where now that, the safety net I think is there now, so maybe it's not that bad because for most, um, for most landlords, they have to meet certain requirements in order to be Section 8 eligible or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't see that so much anymore. But That's we good. Yeah, yeah, it is. But we still hear, you know, they, there's not a blade of grass in the front yard to play on. It's just hard packed dirt, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not any kind of a life for a kid, right, you know. Right, right, right. So the quality of the family's current housing is definitely a it's factor. It's one of the, yeah. and, okay. and there's a very objective rubric that goes mm -hmm. into it. And then there's a number at mm -hmm. the bottom, and that helps us select. Okay. And it also helps us, even if they don't get picked this time, you know, it, we, we tell them, here is your, this is your action plan. Mm -hmm. You can fix this in a year. And many of them do and come back and they're quite successful. So they have a to-do list they that do. they can go fix this, fix that, and get, uh, get that straightened out. But I mean, you talked about the classes. So then mm -hmm. after those families are selected, they start the classes. Like I said, there are financial classes mostly. There are three home maintenance classes, which are, we partner, when you talk about partnering, you know, with the Home Ownership Center, and so they actually go there, and, you know, they take the class from them, and we used to try to do it ourselves, but why should, you know, we shouldn't all do the same thing, so we, we do that together. That's good. But we have um, the Volunteer Lawyers Project comes in and does our legal. We have, um, like, a community engagement class, because every, we try and no matter where we're developing, to have the person get to know, you know, their form of government, if it's, if it's in Dayton, you know, if it's a priority board or a neighborhood association, we really go with them to that first meeting, you know, because we want them to understand what it's about, what the, you know, what the leaf rules are. <laughs> right, right, what it means to be a homeowner yes. in that particular, that particular neighborhood then. Yeah. Yes, Good. And, and really we've added, um, and I'm not, I'm not going to take credit for any of what I'm talking about, like I'm brilliant. We, we've added all these sections because we saw the need to develop the person, but we added nutrition and, um, and cooking and that kind of classes because they, you know, need to know how to make the, you know, I really would almost like to add a coupon class <laughs> because I just think it's a challenge to try know, to get I money know, off. I know somebody who can teach that okay. for you. I'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> later. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. You're right. How to get the most value right. uh, from, from what you can. That, that's, that's really good. That's great. So you've added all those classes. So about how long does it take? from a person's initial application when they don't have a rather lengthy to-do list. Let's, let's say that things, they have things pretty much organized. So how long does it usually take from starting that process to the ceremony with the keys? A superstar could do it in a year. Okay. Um, the, I would say the average is 18 months mm -hmm. and then people that have had a challenge along the way um, maybe two years, but there's all kinds of formulas in it. Part of the sweat equity hours can be done by your friends and family. So let's say you have a church community, then, you know, 
10 of your church uh, mates could come and do a lot of hours for you on one Saturday. You know what I mean? I do. But if, if you're the family that doesn't have that supportive community, then you, it's, you're going to take a little longer. I see. Or if, um, you know, if there, it's a married couple and let's say um, mom doesn't work, she can come and work in the restore almost every day while the kids are in school, dad's at the job, and so they get their sweat equity hours fast, pretty fast too. Oh, so it, anywhere from a year to two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as far as the sweat equity and where a family can do that, they have opportunities. Are, are you building all year round? We are. Constantly? Yes. Okay. All right. And now that we have our lovely new building, we can actually pre-frame inside. Okay. So uh, we, we've actually gone to a model of pre-framing, and I don't know if you can visualize it, but in the olden days, we used to take all the individual pieces of lumber and put them together there. Right. Now we build the walls in one piece and then stand them up and then put them together so the house goes up a lot faster like that. And it's very rewarding on that first day, you know, to put up panels mm -hmm. instead of sticks. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So individuals can, um, they can come and build that sweat equity by volunteering yes. in building actually in your site on Riverview and yes. or working in Wherever the restore we're building. Mm -hmm. shop in, uh, and do that or actually come on site. Yes. And, and is there some office work too? Do you there, have some, um, a little bit of that? There can be with advance notice. Okay. Sure, I mean, some sure. of our, some of our families do that, you know, for us and you know we have we send thank you notes to everybody for everything yeah. so you know a lot of people are keying that in for right, us you right, know right. that's that's really very important that people get get recognized <laughs> well what is a typical floor plan of a habitat house well or is know, there a typical I floor would plan? say there's not a typical but I have nine standardized house plans okay. and um, then this is also a process improvement because in the day we just had you know, one set of plans that we would have red marks on, you know what I mean? And yeah. it was hard to read, but now these are all on CAD and, you know, there are nine separate ones and they're kind of pre-approved by the various municipalities. So um, the only things that we might change is if it's a handicapped entrance or width of the doorways or things like that. But so our smallest plan is a, um, like a three bedroom, one bath. And that's called the Ann. And I would say that's the one we've built the most of. Okay. But then over the years, you know, we get these larger families. And, you know, I'm not going to reject. Habitat International kind of tells us that we should not build anything larger than a five bedroom, two bath. So that is our largest. And no matter how many people you have, that's got to do for you. Okay. So, and then it's got common areas like you know, the dining area has to accommodate however many people would live in a five bedroom house. Yes. So it's anywhere in between. All right. And we do a very, I'm so proud now about how we fit in a neighborhood. Because in the day, in the olden days, we would just do our habitat house and you better be thankful for it, no matter what. I mean, you know, we're building in Dayton in a neighborhood of three bedroom, two story frames. And then we put our ranch One house story. there. Uh, that's not going to get, nobody's going to like that. Well, so now we have a plan that builds the two story, you know what I mean? So we can fit anywhere and really you're not going to recognize us now as the habitat house. It's just going to be the nice house. Well, that's good. That's good. You don't want to be just talked about the habitat well, house. Well, believe me, it's been said, so I don't get yeah. my feelings hurt because sure. okay. we did it. Yeah. We yeah. put a little house and... But you learned from that. We learned. Yeah. We don't do it twice. Right, right. You <laughs> learned from that. And then you've also touched on a bit about the energy efficiency yes. that you all strive for. And that is, what did you say? It's, it's Energy Star. Energy Since Star. Since 2008, all of our home, new construction is Energy Star. Okay. And we have taken the time, which really was hard to do, but we have measured the savings for the families and it's 30 percent on their utility cost. Well, that's really impressive. It is. Yeah. I don't know mm -hmm. why we as consumers don't all demand it yes. on our house, yes. all of us. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, it's really very, very important. Then you've also touched on just a little bit, I want to make sure I have this, that you do 
um, uh, contract for things that have to be yes. licensed and, yes. and, and, and inspected. Yes. Okay. Do you have very many of those professionals volunteering to do that for you uh, to um, assist with keeping costs down? Or? Uh, we have 10 to 15 percent of our contracted services are donated. Okay. The rest of it we just pay for. So there's some people out there that are donating that. Yes. And that's lovely. Yes, that's and, really and you know, it's kind of too, like if we use this, this person a hundred percent then you know he, he does one free or uh -huh. you know what I mean so it's just uh, we have you know and we've stayed pretty consistently busy too yes <laughs> yes exactly how many homes are you building a year well uh, we in 2011 and 12 we did 14 Okay. But this year we're doing 10. Okay. You're doing so, slowing down just a tad bit. Well, we had a capital campaign for okay. our house. All right. And uh, so we couldn't, you know, we didn't want to, you know. Overdo. Overdo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the new house okay. and where you are. You moved in in the fall, is that right? We actually, yeah. the office moved in in April. Okay. The All restore right. moved in in June. Okay. And yes, we moved to 115 West Riverview. And we are once again under the same roof. We had been divided for the last three years. The restore was at our original location mm -hmm. and we were in rented space and we rented um, a lot and we rented a warehouse. So really for all the rental costs that we have, our mortgage payment is less than the combined rental cost. So it's a better deal it and is. a better place. And yeah. we, now we can, I can yeah. see all of our employees every day. Yes, that's wonderful. Thing. And it's so easy to find us. Right. And and really, thanks to I seventy five, everybody goes past our office now on yes, Riverview. Yes, that is true. It's it's quite a thoroughfare <laughs> now on Riverview. It, it certainly is. is. Let's talk a little bit about the restore. How long have you? Well, what is it? What's okay. in it? Who can use it? And okay. How long has it been going on? It is actually thirteen years old. Okay. And what would happen every Monday anyway is that everybody would clean out their garage and bring me stuff and leave it outside the gate. Okay. So that would be paint or it would be, I don't know, um, a swimming pool, like a small one or something like that. And so we would get the stuff anyway. So we just, and I thought, I think they may have been thinking that we could use it in the construction of a house, you know. Like the leftover yes, paint. Yes, but okay. that doesn't really work. Uh, yeah, I can so imagine that. <laughs> we we started 13 years ago on our Patterson Boulevard location, what's called the Restore. Mm -hmm. And it is stuff that could be used in a house. So it is different than Goodwill because we don't take clothing. Right. And we don't take we don't take too many things small like dishes and things like that. Right. However, if someone asks us to come and get, you know, the bed or whatever they're donating. You know, we do have a truck that picks it up. They almost always have another little box that accompanies it. Okay. So that's where we get the little dishes and okay. stuff that we have. All right. But we still don't do the but clothes. But you're not trying to no. get into the dishes and, the, and, and that type of thing. So, so mostly it's been home stuff that um, somebody that's handy would know, you know, what to do with. If you remodeled your kitchen, your contractor or remodeler could just call us. He removes the cabinets, puts them in the kitchen. We come and get them. Even the old appliances, we come and get those as long as they're still working. And then he just hangs up the new. So it's worked out well because a lot of people who know what they're doing, you know, right. it looks just fine. And their whole kitchen, you know, 17 piece sets. Yes, you know. yes, amazing. And, yes. So, but now at the new location, because the retail floor is twice as big as it used to be, we can take things that we could never take before like carpet brand new carpet and linoleum all right it's not called linoleum yeah. anymore it's called vinyl yes, like, yes. that what tells That's how old okay. i am <laughs> you know they um we had a store that went out of business and so we just had these huge rolls that if you anybody that bought any of them knows what a bar bargain right. it was and it was brand new never been down but we couldn't have done that in the old store. We didn't have that. Didn't kind have of room thing. for mm -hmm. it to be able to. Now, are many of the items donated? Are they able to be used in the houses that you're building, or is it primarily for resale to the public? It is all for resale. It's all for resale. Yes. Okay. Because most of that is furnishing. 
stuff. Okay. Now we do have a wonderful uh, paint recycling program in conjunction with Montgomery County Solid Waste. Yes. So yes. if you would donate your uh, vinyl paint, yeah, vinyl, mm -hmm. latex paint, yeah, that's what it's called, not oil paint, you right. know, and you take it over there and then they package it in a skid. Then we go pick it up and then we remix it into like this lovely beige color. Mm -hmm. And then we put them in five gallon buckets and sell it for like $30. So a lot of um, uh, property owners, you know, lots of like apartments and houses, uh, shop us for our paint. Okay. And uh, we're also then not putting that in the landfill. So Absolutely. we actually in 2010 got an award from the county for our recycling efforts. Good, good. <laughs> Congratulations on that. Thank you. Well, how much then do you speak in terms of the Restore Store um, earning for uh, for your program the, um, the the actual formula and I don't I wasn't prepared with the okay, numbers but right. the how it's supposed to be is that the mortgage income and the net from the restore pays our um, operations mm -hmm. and then our development department raises the money for the builds because if if you were a church you don't want to pay me you want to pay for this, for the house, for this family. So it's much easier to raise the money for the builds than it is like, oh, please donate for the operations of Habitat. And most, most um, uh, foundations and grant givers now want to know what you're doing for, to help yourself. So our restore is the equivalent of Girl Scout cookies. Yes, exactly. Yes. I guess I can I can see that there. <laughs> what types of items would you like to see more of in the restore? Well, I asked Larry that okay. you know, in preparation okay. for coming here, All right. and he did say he gave you his he, Christmas he, wish he list. He did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he said that we he could really use. Uh, you know, we're getting into the electronic age. We are. Yes. And so <laughs> we will. We still do things very uh, mechanically there. So uh, we would like to have a computer and, and do point of sale, you know, so that means everything in the store would be barcoded. You see, you see what I'm saying? I do, like, just I like do. when we do it at Kroger's. So like this that. is this is your restore manager who would like to have yes. the barcoding and all. Yes. yes to and have then that and to take that one step further, there is donation scanning equipment that could occur at your garage site. Yes. And so we just go zip, and you know, I don't know if it takes a digital picture, but it it assigns the barcode there. We already know it before it even gets. before it arrives yes. in there. So that that's wow. what he said. He's a, that's a good dream. That's a that's a good <laughs> thing to have for for managing all of the equipment and things uh, things that have and, come and in. That's Believe it or great. not, it's hard harder yes. than you think yes. to and keep track of your inventory. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. And how um, how do you price things? If well, if we we kind of know what the smalls you know what to charge for those but okay. if we have never sold one before then they go online and they see what they sell for and ours is less than half of that okay check the that's going basically right. what it is right but yeah. I mean oh my goodness we have some things in there that are just unbelievable yeah you know, imagine, like yeah. really, that looks brand new. Yeah, you know? Or maybe it is brand yeah. new, or just just shown briefly somewhere. Right. Well, before we run out of time, I want to give you an opportunity to um, to invite viewers to to volunteer and to say something about how they can be used and how should they volunteer. Uh, that's what you're all about. Okay. Okay. First of all, our website um, is DaytonHabitat.org. And you can go on that website and learn a lot about us, see partner family stories, and you could click the volunteer now button. But it's going to probably drive you to more of the construction type volunteerism. I would say that more than 50% of our volunteers never go on a job site. I never did. That's not my skill. People have to fix my work, you know <laughs> what I mean? So I'm much better at, you know, PR work or, you know, we have a wonderful finance committee that, you know, just helps us bring process and rigor to our agency, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's about. And like I mentioned, there's 20 dedicated people that are on the family selection committee that help us choose our families twice a year. We have a family support committee that helps 
pair the family with a mentor, an advocate, and also keeps our curricula, you know, the right thing for them to be learning. So, I mean, there, there's just, you know, marketing, anything. We can, we can use people on committee work, sure. even event and fundraising which is, I like to, why wouldn't you want to do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So any closing, closing thoughts here? Because our time is running down oh, fast. That, that <laughs> really you. was so fast. It is fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me on here. And, you know, I can talk for hours, so... Well, thank you for coming, and thank, thank you to the viewers for watching, and uh, uh, consider volunteering for Habitat sometime in the course of the next year. It sounds like you can use just about anybody with yes. any skill level. That so is correct. Thank you very much. Thank Good night. You.